As you move through the activities, you're going to be looking more and more at the different paper mills and plantation locations. Now, if you look at my Google Earth Pro, you can see already that some of these have been um, added to my Google Earth Pro map. Now, this is really easy to do. You've got a folder. I'll go back just to show you the Google Earth layers. Um, now, each of the locations um, where some of the 360 video footage was taken, the 360 photos, have all been given a GPS location of where it was taken. So I go to Paper Mill Locations, go to Spotted Gum, and double click on Spotted Gum Dry Mill. That will take me, okay, and add this to your Google Earth Pro map. I just stop it there. So now we've got the dry mill. There's a few activities um, when you're looking at the processing of the, the forestry uh, where you have to use some of the tools of Google Earth Pro. So for one of them, you might want to measure distance. I have a click on this little ruler function here. You can click once on the, the mill, twice to maybe the nearest town or the coast, and that tells you the distance there. Okay, you can also using it doing a pass, you can do multiple locations. So I'll click once here, another one there, another one there. You can create a slight more bent path. And again, go to measurements, change that to the same one kilometers, 1.42 kilometers. Now, one of the good things about the um, creating a path is something else you can do. Um, I've okayed that. So if I now right click on that path I've just created, I go to show elevation profile. Now you can see as I move along, it tells me the terrain of that area. Now, I've only chosen a very small part of the map, but you might want to look at that for some of your plantations or for some of the other activities. Okay, it's created it's just basically doing a cross section of the whole area, which I think is quite handy. Just close that. One of the other activities you might want to do or uh, might need one of the tools is looking at the area of a forestry and how large it is. So for this one here, you've got a small plot of land there where some of the trees are growing. Uh, you want to measure the overall size of it. So with the polygon function that I've just loaded up, which is this one there, I'm going to click once, twice, three times, and I've got roughly the area there. Go to measurements, and that tells me in square kilometers, that's also very small, it's actually under, okay, one square kilometer. So obviously it has to be slightly bigger to register, but um, so if I was to cancel that one, do that one more time, it would do a slightly bigger area. So move that one out of the way once. You can click it multiple times, but I'll get a slightly better fit. Okay, now I'll go to measurements. You can see 0.1 square kilometers. So that's the polygon function too. Uh, the last thing to quickly show you that may be of some use as well is the history um, of the different satellite images. Um, they come up to various, so you can move through different parts of the, um, the timeline and it shows you what the area looks like uh, you know, from the earliest date is 2009 right the way up to present day. And it shows you what the satellite view looked at the time. And you can, and this is particularly useful when you're looking at plantations because you can see the different stages of growth and how quickly the trees are growing and and how they're changing that cycle from uh, seeds to the harvest.